Hello fellow heroes and welcome back to another endgame focus build for the hunters. For today's showcase, we are looking at a not so popular exotic named Renewal's Grasp, which has fallen from grace and was one of the most powerful hunter exotics for using stasis whatsoever. Now I know most of you may say that the exotic is still good and viable, but that's a question I want to ask you all. Is this exotic to you viable still after this great nerf? This is what we'll be looking into as of today with this endgame build based around the exotic and the strengths. From testing, it still allows you to control large areas of combatants with a single grenade and is incredibly useful against champions of all types. However, the increased base cooldown of dustful grenades from 62 seconds to 152 seconds means that you need to rely heavily on your abilities and mods to really make a difference or else you'll be left with a very slow charge setup. Now it's not a huge issue, but it's something that we do need to highlight going forward. But you know what else is still viable to this very end date? this channel right here so why not leave a like a sub and turn your notification for more content like this in the future i would really appreciate it to start with the subclass we will be using the revenant and from here the aspects and fragments used will be more focused on increasing the benefits of dust filled grenades and their overall making them stronger the last time we did this we focused mainly on making ourselves tanky and back then it was very much possible to do so as regenerating grenades never took too long as of now, it's a bit of a risk to do because of the massive reduced cooldown placed on the exotics, so we will need to change a few things up to make a noticeable difference. So let's look at what we're using first. You want Touch of Winter Aspect, which will give you increased radius on dust fields and a stasis crystal at the moment it's formed. You then want Grim Harvest Aspect, as you want to collect as many stasis shards as possible for both region and midi generation and abilities overall via elemental shards. Next, you want Whisper Endurance for increased slow and freeze time on combatants, Whisper to Shards which will allow us to destroy stasis crystals for a quick regen charge rate, Whisper of Rendering for a 42.5% kinetic damage increase against frozen combatants, Whisper of Conduction for making stasis shards track to you when nearby, and then Whisper to Hunger for increased midi energy gain from collecting stasis shards. For stats, we have 90 Resilience, 100 Discipline, 50 Intellect, and 60 in Strength. Ideally, the plan is to have both your melee and discipline stat as high as possible so we can bounce between the two and have our abilities back quickly. So, key mods to have here are elemental shards for turning stasis shards into wells, elemental armors for allowing our stasis weapon to create wells and kills, a font of wisdom for a plus 15 intellect, radiant light for plus 20 in strength and additional purposes, and lastly, elemental light for creating wells and super kills, although if you take out the bomber mod, you could add in the Bound for Wells mod instead. As you can see, the setup is similar to what we had the last time, but the main difference here is that we plan to use as much of our energy to feed back into our grenade's cooldown rate and try and adjust the nerve damage. In its very base form, you'll be waiting for a few minutes to get it back if you just rely on your discipline stat alone. But if you add in things like impact induction, which will give you a 20% energy back to your grenades for each mini hit made, and then add on the demolitionist and hesitant perks to your weapons, then you can get the cooldown rate back to pre nerve levels. This of course has its downside, but I'll cover more of that in a bit. For weapons, your primaries need to be stasis and have the hesitant perk available. It doesn't matter as to what other perks you have, you just need to make sure you have that one key perk so you can activate Whispers of Shards straight away. For example, I have the Syncopation 53 Pulse Rifle with Moving Target and Headstone, and you'll want to craft this weapon as its base stats wise is pretty good, has good range and damage, and purple isn't so bad for both PvE and PvP. Although my role isn't the greatest, you can still use and get away with the current role that I have shown as it doesn't require a lot to make the weapon even more better. Out of the package, it's pretty brilliant. Alternatively, the Kray AR with Substance and Headstone is another fantastic weapon to have if you like to have a bullet hose and also quick non-stop glaciers as you go. For a secondary, we have the Pointed Inquiry Scout Rifle with Genesis and Adaptive Munitions, a great combo to have when breaking shields and need that extra range to stay out GM level damages. 150s have received a slight buff in terms of damage output now, and are even more viable with their damage and crit multipliers applied. I would say if you can get your hands on this weapon, in particular, you should be good for any in-game content that will require match game, and if you don't want to swap out the weapons you like for the right elemental type. Now, alternatively, Lubre's Ruin is another great weapon to use if you enjoy Glaives, as they as well have been buffed and are also borderline amazing in GMs with their damage and protection feature, making you near impossible to kill at times. 
For Heavy, we have the Storm Chaser Linear Fusion with Well Rounded and Firing Line. Another great and upcoming weapon that I can see being useful once Arc 3.0 comes, and the many mods or abilities buff it may bring with it. Great for applying high crit damage, and as a unique 3 burst fusion, can easily down those with easily hit critical spots. Now, if that's not your thing, then the Galahorn is a great weapon to use as well if you want even more collateral damage involved. For your stats, both the Discipline and Strength stat will be the two key areas for building up enough ability energy to put the many buffs that you'll be relying on. Unlike last time, we need to heavily make sure we have the right mods and gear available to pull in more energy towards our grenades. Now, firstly, you will need to get your Discipline up to 100, and this time around, you can't lower it any more than 90. This is because of the base duration effect when the exotic is heavily affecting how fast we can get our dust bowl grenades in a short period. Having it at 100 will allow you to have a much faster and passive cooldown rate when out of action, but also in case things go pear shape and you're not able to create a glacier to regen what you have lost. Because of stasis and how the fragments work, as long as you have what is shown, you should be good enough for getting your grenades back quickly. But at the same time, having elemental shards, elemental armaments, and the bomber mod can really help you out further down the line. I would also recommend you have the impact induction mod as well, as this will allow you to get your grenades back fairly quickly as long as it bounces off other combatants nearby. Similarly, for your strength stat, having it at 60 to 100 as well would also grant large benefits in terms of producing shards on kills. This, in many ways, will keep your abilities flowing throughout your activity as long as you have rank and file nearby to do so. Of course, having invigoration with a cipher mod is going to help you out a lot as well. And this, all in hand with impact induction, should fix the long and drawn out regen time that the exotic possesses. Lastly, I would then recommend you bump your resilience up as well, as that will allow you to survive certain one shot attacks and GMs, which can be hard to avoid at times. Having it at 90 to 100 is good, but having anything above 50 is pretty much reasonable. Left over wise, we have Linear Fusion Scavenger mod for increasing linear reserves, and Revitalize and Blast, where stunning a champion will cause an ignition. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For Head, we have Discipline, Stasis Siphon, Unquenchable First and Elemental Shards mod. Arm, we have Discipline and Elemental Arms mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Cacus of Dampner, Armor of the Dying Sun and Final Wisdom mod. Leg, we have Mind Recovery, Linear Fusion Scavenger, Invigoration and Radiant Light mod. Cloak, we have Resilience, Revitalize and Blast, Bomber and Elemental Light mod. So, as covered before, we know that the build was able to provide great damage resistance, large area effect for slowing down pockets of combatants, and absurdly quick grenade cooldown rates, which was very much increased on via headstone and demolitions based weapons. Now, taking a look at the build in its current state shows that it's still very much possible to get the rapid cooldown rates that we are used to, but only on certain factors being met, such as having fragments that focus heavily into grenade regen, discipline being at 100, and mods have been able to grant you energy to your grenade in any way or form. And this can be looked at quite aggressively as to why this needs to be done. Bungie, when they made the nerf, inflicted quite a high toll on the exotic use, which is its whole identity at this point. By them making the base charge rate so high, players weren't able to go ahead and spam it as much as they like, even though its main issues were from PvP and not really PvE. This once again shows why it's important for them to balance PvE and PvP separately, as not doing so can kill the exotic outright. Now, as you can see from the video, our cooldown rate is much faster compared to its base form, and once you add in other things, this can become a hell of a lot more quicker in the mean run. This can be used in any content you like, including GMs, to which I did give it a try in, and to be honest, if you use this setup with a glaive and stay within your dust field grenades to dragon champions, you'll be pretty effective at stopping them in their spot. You'll be surprised as to how good the combo stasis and glaives really are. The build in Exotic is still as powerful as you last remembered, thanks to stasis, but with its nerf, it will require you to put more energy into the build so you can get more bang out of it. It won't be for everyone's taste at first, but once you get the main build down, the nerf of armor renewers doesn't feel that bad, and honestly, could make a top 10 endgame build for all users if used correctly. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with more Destiny content and news. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and see you all in the next one.